Hey, Adidas fans, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to take a look at some of the monitoring view updates that have recently been made to the data flows within Azure Data Factory and Azure Synapse Analytics. And the monitoring view is where you're going to go to see how your data flows have performed. Uh, you can look at both how they performed over time, both from a debug and a triggered execution of your pipeline. So the pipeline monitoring is a um, built-in aspect of both Azure Synapse Analytics and Azure Data Factory. And then within there, when you have data flow activities, if you click into the eyeglasses on each of those activities, you can get the deep introspection of how much data was being transformed, how much data was uh, read and was written, as well as the timings for all the transformations and distribution of data and all those things. So let's dig into what the updates are and the enhancements for that view. So let's start here on this very simple pipeline I have on my screen. So I'm in design mode. I'm in my uh, my pipeline debug right here. And I click the, the debug button to execute this to test it. Now, I just have two data flows on here, uh, two different loans uh, data flows. And after I executed, I had the uh, monitoring view at the bottom under the output pane. So this is the first area that the monitoring, uh, the new monitoring experience is exposed to you. So let's take the, uh, we'll take loans one and we'll click on the eyeglasses to look at the, um, the insights into that data flow. All right, and when you pop into the monitoring view, you'll see some of the new um, enhancements that were made, the changes that we made to the monitoring view. Now, the idea of the monitoring view is to give you a, a way to easily identify uh, some bottlenecks and some uh, pain points that you may want to troubleshoot or to look at uh, the performance of the different parts of your data flow. And so the one of the things that we did was we had recently made updates to the data flow designer so that uh, we can handle larger, more complex data flows and graphs. Uh, so we had modified the graph view and the icon aspect ratios a bit. And so we've brought forward that same change now into the monitoring view so you can see the same the same design in the monitoring view. Uh, let me zoom out just a little bit so I can move this up here. So now the graph fits much neater into the, um, view pane, the viewport at the bottom. At the top, the bottom pane is where you can see the details. Now, um, this is not too different than what you had seen previously within the monitoring for data flows. However, what happens now is we've tried to make it easier to identify areas of um, which are the most heavily used part of your data flows, as well as which are the ones that you can look at in terms of having the biggest impact in performance tuning. So, so all the stats that we're collecting and presenting to you now in the data flow monitoring are sortable. So you can take the processing time and sort on that and quickly see that um, of the three sinks within your data flow, sink one is using the most time. And when you click on it, you can see the path the data took to write that data to the sink. Now think about the um, think about the the sort of um, view that you're seeing here as almost like an execution plan that you would see in SQL. And similar to that sort of um, concept, the information you're seeing is really right to left, is from sync to source backward. And the reason for that is because the data is being written uh, into your your destinations and then is being, uh, you know, after being transformed and read from the source. And so the feedback that you're getting is going to give you that information from the data writer back to the source. So think about that when you're looking at these ex execution plans here in the monitoring view. So if I click on the different sinks, I can see the different path each of the data uh, the data took in each case. The lookup sync uh, that I have highlighted right now is the top stream within the flow, the data flow. But you see that the aggregate being used here is actually, uh, or being created here is actually being used in a join down here. So it is highlighted as well when I click on that. So what I had done here was I'd clicked on the processing time to see the, the uh, uh, which of the sinks or the, the streams in the flow was taking the most amount of time. And so the sync one was taking nearly two minutes to execute. So that's the, uh, that's the area to focus on in terms of performance tuning. And of that one minute, 53 seconds, there was a uh, processing stage that took a minute 15. So uh, most of the time is being taken by one stage within that, uh, that stream or that flow. The way to figure that out is to click on the stages. So you click on the stages icon and you can see that the details of the different transformations within that uh, sync stream and the number of rows that are being written. All right, so the uh, obvious one here is the one minute, minute and 15 seconds being taken up by the sync, the conditional split and the lookup. Now, the reason why it's shown as a stage is because as your data flow code gets executed on the Spark cluster, the, um, the code that you're sending down is actually the script being written by the UI known as data flow script. And the executor job on the Spark cluster will take that, decompose it, and then execute it in stages. 
So that's why this is a single stage. Now what you could do is you take that information, you can look at the way that the data is being written in the sync. And you know, it, it could just be the nature of, this is maybe being written to a database. Um, and so you're having some contention or some throughput um, issues on the database that you're writing to. Um, this is how you can identify what to look at in your performance tuning. And we have a whole separate set of videos and documents, white papers on how to tune these, the data flows then. Now the lineage view is uh, similar to what you've had before. When you click on that, you'll see the origin of all the, the columns that you're writing. You can see if they were just directly mapped, if they were calculated somewhere within the, um, the data flow, or if they were just being used but not written. So another way to use this view would also be to sort by rows written. This way you can show um, or you can uh, uh, look at and easily identify which of the streams within your data flow is writing the most data. And that could be another good way to look at uh, optimizing a specific part of your data flow. So now this new view is, is available to both Azure Data Factory and Azure Synapse Analytics uh, within data flows. Uh, now, the other thing I want to show is that if you've been using data flows in those tools up to now, the view would look something like this right here. So all I had to do was zoom in with the plus sign uh, and use the zoom slider to be able to see the the larger icons, which was the view uh, previously. Um, and this view also gives you information such as what parts of the uh, streams in the data flow was cached. Uh, what that means though, is that zooming into this view will also give you the labels on the icons. So the graph at the um, zoomed out view uh, is giving you the icons. And when you hover, you see the names. You can also use the search button to find specific parts of your data flow. And then when you click on it, you'll get the highlights and zoomed in on that area. Uh, but if you want to see the labels uh, while you're uh, traversing your graph, just zoom in and you'll be able to get the labels showing up for you like I did previously. Okay, so while I just happen to have this term 36 conditional split highlighted, I'll show you that at the bottom then, you get the details of each different transformation. Uh, now, in this case, this transformation is a conditional split. Here are the number of rows that were calculated at just a single partition and how long that entire stage. To see the stage, go back to the previous view and you'll see the stages grouped together to know what actually is all occurring in there. The last time it was updated, and there's no skewed and synchrotosis associated with a single partition. Okay, now let's click on the sync. The sync details gives you a lot more a lot more information about the details of the data that was written. Um, now, I have another example on a different uh, monitor view I'm going to show you. So I'm going to just gloss over this real quick, but we are going to surface to you now a lot more information about the sync, such as the pre and post processing time, um, how much time it took to maybe uh, merge some files together if you're doing a single file, which by the way is a fairly costly operation. You can see in this case, it took almost four seconds to do that. Um, but the graphs of the data distribution I have on a different um, on a different graph, so we'll wait for that one. So let me go back out to the uh, the smaller, the original sort of new default aspect here, and let's click on the white space. And the other tab I wanted to show you was all streams. So when you click on all streams, you can see then all the transformations within your data flow, and then you can sort on these as well. So now you can see uh, which transformations and which stages within your uh, data flow very easily you can see which ones took the most time and then you can also sort by skewness and kurtosis so you can see which ones might have some data skew associated with that uh, something they might want to look at in terms of data distribution or partitioning so i said i wanted to go over to a different graph let's do that now all right so i switched out a debug into um, executed pipelines from triggers so these would be sort of your operationalized uh, pipelines now let's look at this one called uh, that i called pipeline two. That's not the best practice, but it is what it is. And I have this movie analytics data flow. So I'm going to click on the uh, data flow uh, down here. I'm going to look at the eyeglasses button to see the details in the monitoring view there. And there we go. Uh, so now in this case, if I look at the all streams here, let's go ahead and sort by skew. And uh, actually there's nothing that's really all that uh, dramatically uh, horrible here, but let's look at the, let's take a look at this sort transformation. So what happens here in the sort transformation is that the stage time you can see took 30 seconds. There are 76 partitions. Kurtos is indicating that uh, data distribution is not optimal for that transformation. Especially with the sort transformation, I would recommend going in and just setting a single partition for this. It, it might actually increase that, 30, uh, improve that 30 second uh, time. Okay, so while we have another graph open, let me just uh, shrink this down a little bit more. Let's go into the sinks here. I promised a little bit more information on the um, on the 
sync details as well. And now you can see that we have a total processing time, number of rows calculated. Uh, we also include the uh, pre and post processing commands. Now in this case, I'm not merging files. So I don't get the merge file output. And if I had turned on error row handling, you'd also see the uh, information about so the error rows would come in here as well. You also will see any temp tables, and the names of the temp tables that we use. So you get details about you know, writing data into database things, which tend to be a little bit more complex than writing data to the lake. So we're now servicing that to you as well. So just like you see in the uh, data preview pane within your designer, it will also service to you the, um, the column operations within each of the transformations as well. And then finally, let's go back to one of my favorite enhancements we've made, which is that all streams again. And if we click here now in this data flow, I'm going to look to see which time was taken uh, the most time was taken within this data flow. And I can see that we have the min max rating by year. That is an aggregate transformation, which you know makes sense if you're doing some complex computations in there. It's going to take the most amount of time. It took 3 to 5 seconds. Now, if I were to try to optimize the performance of this data flow based on information, I would say that even though the aggregate is taking that amount of time, if I go back to the all streams and I look at the different timings on here, usually I'm going to focus in on the on the sync. So when I sorted by this view, I initially saw the aggregate, but that was really the same amount of time as it took the sync. So in this case, I would take the sync and I would try to optimize here. So if I'm writing to a database, I'm going to look at maybe the the size or the scale of the database that I'm writing to. And I might want to uh, repartition at the sync as opposed to repartitioning throughout the data flow and getting uh, possibly data shuffling occurring throughout the uh, data flow transformation. All right, so that's to catch you up to speed with the changes that were made to the new monitoring view for data flows in Azure Synapse Analytics and Azure Data Factory. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.